Hi everyone, I'm Swati from India Hikes. Today we're talking about a very important topic that you cannot ignore, especially if you're stepping into high altitudes. You could be going on a Himalayan trek, you could be going anywhere in the world into high altitude, or you could be going to Badrinath, Kedarnath, your Char Dham Yatras. You need to know about this important information about AMS because we are covering five of the most common myths that we hear about acute mountain sickness. And today in this video, we are going to be busting all of those myths and giving you the right information and to do that I have with me Dr. Lakshmi Selva Kumaran. She is the head of the learning and development team at India Hikes. So all of the tech leaders working at India Hikes are trained by her and her team and they become medical experts in the mountains under her and her team's guidance. So if there's anyone we need to hear from about AMS it's her. So thank you Lakshmi for coming on the show. Thank you Swati for having me. We're going to dive straight into it because we have around uh, five myths that we're going to cover and I'm going to dive right into the first one. So Lakshmi, I often hear this particular myth and I think if we're given a penny for the number of times we'd heard it, we'd be millionaires by now and that is, I've been in high altitude before, nothing has happened to me and I'm not going to get AMS again because of that. So can you tell us, is this a myth or is this true? It's definitely a myth. Um, so just to give a little bit of an understanding, every time you go to the mountains, especially when you cross somewhere above 8000 feet, you are exposing yourself to an environment where you don't get much oxygen per breath. So your body is trying to cope up with that as and when you move up the altitude. So your body does a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways it tries to cope with itself. Uh, it uh, increases your heart rate, it increases uh, the number of RBCs that you have in your own body to carry the oxygen. So a lot of little changes happens within the body to basically get used to that atmosphere and that's what we call acclimatization. But the effect of acclimatization, the the period it lasts as soon as you come back to a lower altitude is maximum of 14 days. So beyond 14 days, whatever you have gained uh, by going to a high altitude, that effect disappears. So the very next time you are going to a high altitude again, your body is going to treat it as if it's exposing itself to a low oxygen environment in a new way. So every time you go up, uh, you do need to acclimatize as long as the periods of time interval is beyond 14 days. So the thought that because last time I did not get altitude illness, I'm not going to get it back again, uh, is not necessarily true. Uh, the actual physiology of why altitude illness happen is very well known, but what are the factors that can bring it about is not very well known. So a variable amount of factors can still get you an AMS and you need to be on watch for it. So I hope you heard that right. If you have not been in high altitude for the past 14 days, your previous experience from several years ago doesn't count. So treat it as a brand new experience at high altitude. So that brings me to my second myth, Lakshmi. And again, this is something we hear a lot. And uh, this states that Dimox masks symptoms of AMS. So don't take Dimox. What are your thoughts on that? This is one of the most dangerous myths to have. Uh, primarily because Diamos actually helps you um, acclimatize better and in fact it can aid you to have a much more successful and comfortable check if you just understand how it does and what it does. Um, to just give you some context, I think Indian Himalayas uh, is very unique in that sense that uh, uh, the mountains are very steep. So you climb very fast in a day. So according to general guidelines, it is recommended you don't climb more than 1000 feet a day. Unfortunately, in Indian Himalayas, that's not going to be possible. That's why we call it as forced uh, ascents. So in such a situation where you're already putting pressure on your body, it is really important to say, I will take whatever help I can get to make sure that I feel more comfortable on the trek and I reduce the chances of having AMS on a trek. Right? Many people also have this idea that I don't want to take a medicine. Um, it plays with their mind. Uh, but I'm saying that you didn't stop yourself from wearing a more comfortable shoe or a more functional shoe or a functional backpack. You do upgrade with time and knowledge and technology, better ways of going and doing about a check. For me, Diamox is just one another way of doing that. Um, 
Dimox is otherwise very safe drug to consume. In fact, we for treks that goes beyond 14,000 feet, we actually strongly recommend our trekkers to take Dimox because you're coming all the way from planes um, and you're trying to reach 14,000 feet in a matter of two days or three days of a trek. Uh, you are putting your body in a lot of stress and you are also increasing the chances of getting AMS. So might as well take all the help that you can. And so I strongly suggest that uh, don't believe in this myth and take Dimox if you can. Thank you. I think that would have helped clear a lot of people's concerns about taking Dimox. Um, that brings me to another very common myth that we hear, which is drink a lot of water and you'll not get AMS. What are your thoughts? That is also another big myth. Um, but I would say it's there is a certain truth to it. I, let me say what, what I mean by that. Okay, um, Hydration is very important. Um, given that we trek in the Himalayas, the weather is not the weather that you usually see in most other regions. You are wearing a lot of layers. You don't even realize how much you are sweating. So your body is actually lo losing a lot of fluids except that you are not realizing that you are losing a lot of fluids. So yes, you might end up having dehydration. You might end up having uh, problems because of dehydration and it can possibly result in also additional symptoms of AMS because your just body is again getting very stressed, right? But there is no otherwise correlation between saying if I am hydrating really well, I am not at all going to get AMS. It's not necessarily a direct link. Uh, and there has been no studies that proves that also. Here is another myth I want to uh, cover where trekkers almost always say it is not AMS, it's probably something else. They talk about travel, they talk about I'm in a new place and anything they're feeling, they attribute it to something else. So that is also a big myth that we notice. So what are your thoughts on that? In my experience, this is one of the most biggest dangers to have that why? Because most of the initial symptoms, people always assume that AMS always starts with headache and then moves on to other symptoms. But in reality, many a times it will start with gastric issues uh, and then moves on to other aspects of AMS. So when you are having feeling indigestion, when you are feeling nausea, when you are feeling lack of appetite, um, people usually tend to attribute to, oh, I have traveled too much or I have eaten uh, at a restaurant the day before and the food is just not getting along with me. A lot of times people come and say, oh, the food is too spicy. Uh, my body is not getting used to it. Yes, true, but also it is possible because your digestion is getting stressed because it's not getting enough oxygen. And one of the first systems to shut off when your body is not getting enough oxygen is your digestive system, right? Because your body can sustain itself without um, getting energy from your the food that you're consuming right now if it feels that it needs to give oxygen to all the other primary functions of your body. So one of the major symptoms that we'll initially start with is GI issues. And that's the most one that people ignore it as saying it's something else. So it's always important to say that if you have any of the symptoms of AMS, be it headache, be it nausea, vomiting, uh, you are having lack of appetite, uh, lack of sleep, you should always attribute it to AMS first, then anything else. And in fact, if any of these happens, I would strongly recommend go on a course of preventive course of Diamox at least um, and then see how it goes. And this is also the difference between a trekker who succeeds and has to come back. Uh, people who take the precaution usually ends up uh, and they do it so early, they actually end up completing the trek. Thank you. I think uh, that also is a very big myth and I think you've kind of helped understand that it's important to attribute anything to AMS first and nip it in the bud versus try to figure other things out. Um, that brings me to my last big myth that we hear about, which is I am very fit and I'm not going to get AMS. <laughs> what are your thoughts? See, I want to start by saying that fitness is a really important factor for your trek, right? Uh, people who are fit enjoy the trek. They also are able to do the trek very comfortably, right? And what is perhaps important for uh, success of the trek is you maintaining a comfortable pace. So in that, yes, fitness helps. Uh, you are not stressing your body too much. You are not stopping again and again to take a breath. You are not panting hard. You are not 
pushing your body through just will power saying i'm going to take that one step after the other right so in all of this fitness plays a huge role and in that sense yes it does help you not become more susceptible to ams however on the other hand i have seen that people who are extremely fit also want to challenge themselves they are the ones who say you know what i want to see i want I, i want to make sure that i'm the first one to reach the next campsite uh, they are the ones who will never keep themselves at that comfortable pace they would want to kind of push themselves hard and that is what will perhaps if you are not careful can he- push you to get ams um on a trek and that has happened it has happened that a very very fit healthy trekker ends up on the campsite way ahead of other trekkers and then suddenly in the evening they are the ones having all kinds of symptoms of ams um so it's very important to understand that fitness just having fitness doesn't mean that you're not going to get ams is the fact that having fitness uh, just puts you at a comfortable pace and that pace is what helps you kind of not get ams very strong basically you're not over stressing your body yes. if you're fit yes so it's a matter of giving your body the chance to acclimatize to the situation as and when you are climbing high so let's say you there is a certain rate at which your body is acclimatizing if you are pushing your body beyond that rate whether you're fit or not doesn't matter i think those are the five biggest myths we hear all the time but there are a lot of other myths that come to my ears saying a lot of trekkers keep cotton in their ears thinking that will help avoid ams a lot of people think uh, drinking caffeine either increases possibilities or reduces possibilities so i want you to give our trekkers a, a kind of final message before they go into a high altitude what would you advise them overall so considering that ams is not a very uh, um well understood illness uh, there are a lot of factors that play into saying what can cause uh, ams so then that goes without saying what can prevent ams also uh, the only things that we know that at the end of the day are guaranteed to help you not or reduce the chances i mean i can't even say you won't have ams that's anyone who says that don't believe them you can reduce the chances of getting ams is making sure that you are fit uh making sure that you are pacing yourself well uh making sure that you're giving your body enough rest at every point of uh, all our campsites that is one of the reasons why we also at india hikes encourage that try and reach the campsites next campsite as early as you can because you're giving your body more time in the higher altitude to acclimatize better for the next day's trek in fact uh, in our design we use we also have acclimatization walks in the evening that again helps uh making sure that you're eating well uh, listening to your body essentially all of these are important but most important is as soon as you see any of these initial symptoms of ams never attribute it to anything else come and speak to your di- trek leader directly or if you're trekking on your own don't take it lightly get yourself on a preventive course of diamox monitor yourself if needed switch to a curative course of diamox and in in my 8 years or 9 years of having seen so many cases the people who come and say i have starting symptoms of ams um very early on are the ones who end up completing the trek successfully just because they took the step very very early on i think that's some golden advice from lakshmi here because nobody has seen the number of ams cases as her or we document every um, ams case that happens at india hikes with over 30000 trekkers trekking per year our number of case studies is way more than we can count and uh, lakshmi was telling me earlier almost in every group we have at least 2 3 people facing symptoms of acute mountain sickness and almost everybody is treated like we say our mantra is to nip it in the bud so detect it early on and treat it so that you can have a successful trek um i think we have had a very nice conversation with lakshmi thank you so much thank you we have a lot of other video content about acute mountain sickness to understand what exactly it is how to prevent it we've also talked about the advanced uh, versions of acute mountain sickness which is hape and haze so we have lots of video content on that we also have content on life saving drugs uh, what they are and how they will help you during acute mountain sickness so make sure you take a look at our playlist study all of those if you're going on a high altitude trek because no amount of preparation is enough that is what will help you you have a good tech um if you have any questions please drop in a comment i will have lakshmi herself respond to you if i can get some time from her otherwise you can write to tws@indiahikes.com and i'll get back to you 
make sure you continue watching our channel for more such videos about trekking about high altitude about everything you need to know in the trekking world thank you for watching don't forget the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it